my name is Dr. Ruthie. I'm a professional sex educator, as you probably already know. I blog over at exploringintimacy.com, but today I'm here thanks to the great folks at funwares.com, answering your questions about sex and relationships, and in this video, giving you a little bit of career advice. Let's see what has come in through the old email, shall we? I've got a question from a wonderful young woman who says, um, in a long email, I'm just pulling out part of it, um, I am currently in undergrad and I found myself extremely interested in specializing in sexology. I guess that's how I might phrase that. Here's the problem. I'm not entirely sure what the best way is to do that. What should I do? All right. That is a very open question as you noted elsewhere in your email. So I'm excited to give you a little bit of information and hopefully some resources that will help you continue on your way to discovering this. There's a number of different ways to move forward with being a professional in, um, in sexual well-being or, you know, that gray big field like that. Um, the first thing to think about is kind of what general direction you want to do. Now, from the tone of your email, it sounds to me, and I, and I didn't read all of it out loud here, it sounds to me that um, you're interested in doing direct services at this point in time. So that means that you want to meet one-on-one -on -one with people who are looking for assistance to utilize your knowledge, guidance, whatever the case may be, and help them to find ways for them to resolve their concerns. Um, or to enhance their quality of life around sexuality topics. Wonderful. So I'm going to tailor this advice a little more in that direction. But just for the record, there are other options as well. There is fantastic work to be done in the areas of research, which can um, influence policy and help um, people who are direct practitioners to learn what to do that works. Um, it can do all kinds of great things with research. There um, is policy work specifically, so that could mean working for a nonprofit or another organization that utilizes the work of researchers and, uh, and other work to um, influence policy on a larger level. Could be through the government, could be in the school system, could be in all different sorts of places. Um, there are also, you know, authors and educators who work specifically with groups or educators who, who train the trainers, right? So they're not the people who work directly with direct services, but they're one above teaching people how to do work with direct services. And that could mean working at a university level or all sorts of other directions like that. So let's focus in on those direct service levels. Now there are more options than what I can cover here for you. So what this is meant to do is just give you some idea of some of the options so that you can explore and move forward and, and maybe find things I didn't mention here in this video. So there are a few different routes to go. One is, um, as you mentioned elsewhere in your email, is the possibility of becoming a licensed mental health practitioner of some sort. There are several different fields of mental health, and um, all of them, to the best of my knowledge, but you know, don't quote me too much on this, require a master's degree, some time practicing, some time receiving mentorship, and uh, like an exam that goes towards getting a license at the state level. Um, so there's several different ones. There's, you know, um, clinical social workers and there's professional counselors and there's psychologists and family therapists and all those. So you could check into those and see which ones best match your philosophy and um, are at universities that are accessible to you. And then you can contact those programs, those professional associations, the state licensure boards, whatever the case may be to learn more about how to follow those. Now those will all be for more general practice. So you're also gonna to wanna to figure out how to specialize in sexuality. So that could mean um, going to a school that has a sexuality specialization. It could mean getting extracurricular, extra education, and getting certified from somewhere else. In the United States, the big place to get certified is ASECT, the American Association of Sex Educators, Counselors, and Therapists. That's one of the first resources that I suggest you check out, whether you want to be a licensed therapist or one of the other options I'm about to talk about. Um, they will list different programs that um, can help you to get accredited. You can learn what accreditation is as a sex therapist and all that good stuff like that. Now, um, it still requires the mental health side that I just talked about, and then this is kind of on top of that, unless you happen to go to a program that wraps the sexuality in with the rest of it. And those are kind of rare, so you need to plan ahead if you're going to find that. Um, you could also be a sex educator like myself. And again, check out ASECT um, to learn more about what it means to certify as a sex educator, whether you want to certify or not. Um, it's different than mental health as far as, you know, whether you're required to license by your state and things like that. So these are all legal things that you should talk to professionals about specifically for the area you want to pursue. Don't, don't, you know, this video is not enough to give you all the information on that. 
Um, so being a sex educator means that you're not dealing with mental health. You're educating people specifically about sexuality. Um, there's also counseling under ASACT, which has a lot in common with the therapy part and some differences, so check that out on their website. Um, you could also go into coaching, and there are plenty of sex coaches out there who are members of ASACT, and so you can take a look at that and see um, if that seems like a good match for you if there's information. There's lots of different coaching certification programs, although you're not, you know, anybody can call themselves a coach, so <laughs> buyer beware on that. Make sure you have somebody has the background that you're looking for if you're hiring a coach. Um, so if you're interested in coach training programs, there are lots of them out there. Check to see who runs them and if they're reputable, um, and ask around if, if that is a direction you're looking for, you, you know, you can drop me an email and I can give you a few places to start, but I'm not an expert on all the programs by any means. Um, a number of them, their owners have published books that you can find, um, you know, through different book vendors online so that can give you an idea of where you're headed there as well. Um, Patty Britton published a really good book that you can find for sale online about, um, and she happens to run a program. So that would be one place to start and check around. Um, you could also become a sex worker, which is probably not legal wherever you happen to live, but a lot of people do it anyway. There are, believe it or not, programs where you can train to become a sex worker and, and decide what that means for you, the degree to which you may want to or not want to be hands-on, um, because this is probably not a legal option if you decide to pursue it. Um, you would have to think carefully about a lot of different things and the risks that you're taking, but you're a grown-up, so you have the right to decide how much risk you want to take and not. Um, so that can also be something that you can pursue. You can look at training programs. Um, there are sex workers' rights and advocacy organizations out there that you can contact and ask them to um, give you more information on the different risks and, and their suggestions if that's a direction that you want to pursue. So those are kind of the main avenues for direct service. Um, and you can work in all sorts of places. You can be in private practice. You can be in a group practice. You can work for an agency. Um, there's lots. You can work through an educational facility. There's lots of different opportunities for you in those. Um, these are difficult jobs to get. So I don't want you to think that that is um, an easy path or that it comes um, simply with a lot of money. Uh, it can be done for sure. But I will tell you that um, a lot of folks burn out in the process because it, it really does take a lot to make this a sustainable career option, um, especially if you don't have someone else to partially or completely financially support you. So um, know that. And when you meet someone who is a sexual well-being professional that has put a lot of time and effort into training themselves and providing a good product, make sure to express your appreciation because we work darn hard to make ends meet and to provide you with something that we hope is going to make the world a better place. And I hope that you are inspired to help us with that, uh, with that mission as well. I'm Dr. Ruthie, and I will see you at the next video.